today we're doing our Momentum Portfolio Rebalancing Webcast. We're doing it on a Sunday because we need to do it between the last trading day in Feb and the first trading day in March. And pretty much it was either Saturday, Sunday or Friday evening and we weren't going to do that. So, well, we're here now. Um, so let's get into it. We'll be about a half hour. We've got time for questions. I can see a couple coming through already. I will grab those as and when we get to that point. But first off, quick overcap, what are we looking at? Uh, momentum strategy is a strategy that basically says trends continue for longer than you would imagine. A and they do. And we've got countless examples of this. We've got PSG, EOH, we've got Capitech, we've got Naspen and, uh, Naspass and Aspen, um, and so they are. So this basically says, you know what, these trends continue. And there was a research report in the FT published in about, I think it was 2007, um, which got me interested in this. And for the last couple of years, we've been met, uh, tracking it via just one lap. And at the same time, uh, two years ago, actually put a cash portfolio together. So what we're looking for is basically within the top 40 index, we buy the top five. And when I say winners, we simply do a scan of the top five of the top 40 shares, uh, add in dividends and buy the five winners. Simple as that. And we hold them for a year. In the mid cap, we take uh, six stocks. We take six from the mid cap. It's a slightly larger index with 60 shares. And also we take six just to slightly reduce that risk. And then we benchmark ourselves against the Satrix 40 and the RMB mid cap. These are ETFs. We benchmark ourselves against these respective ETFs uh, because they are tradable. We can buy them. So in that sense, they are real. So we do it the process annual basis and then we come back in a year later and we rebalance we do them uh, on a quarterly basis updates so i'm going to delve into that in a, in a little more but in, in the nut that is what we're looking at and we, we moved it to uh tax years so we hold one march to 28 feb we were doing a calendar year one jan to 31 december uh, but last year we shifted to tax year for for a couple of reasons makes it a bit cleaner for tax purposes but also that that sort of selling on 31 December and buying on 1 March was getting a little bit hairy in terms of liquidity, in terms of having to be around on the 31st of March and the, the sorry, December and the 2nd of Jan. Uh, we funded the portfolios initially uh, 50,000 at the beginning of 2013. We added a further 20,000 at the beginning of last year's portfolio, and we've added another 30,000 uh, as of today, which means total funding over the period has been 100,000. And this is pretty much always, I, I had traded the, mid the, the momentum before in the top 40 space, but I hadn't done it as completely rules-based. I would occasionally kick out a stock if I didn't like it. I would hang on to a stock if I did like it. So beginning of, tw of 2013, we said, now let's make this proper and real. And then I, I wanted to do the 100,000, but it's a case of, well, hang on a second. Let's rather put this money in over a three-year window and let's see that it really does work and that it really is going to deliver the performances. So both mid-cap and top 40 have, as of today, been funded with 100,000 um, and we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. I might add more money, but at this point, I'm comfortable with 100,000 per portfolio. Uh, do I add more to it? Uh, maybe do I withdraw? Perhaps right now, 100,000 is spot on. It's a good chunky amount. So there is the screenshot from Friday afternoon of the uh, top 40, which at this point had 70,000 funding, 50 from the first year, 20 from the second year. Uh, so the 70,000 had grown to just shy of 100,000. This is the stocks just before I sold them. This is 25 to 4. I started selling, I think it was around 4, quarter past 4, I started exiting. Um, so you can see the return down at the bottom down there, up 28.9%. That excludes dividends, which add about an extra percent to it. Um, but also, you've got your costs on the purchase side, but we don't yet have our costs on the sell side. My costs are 0 0.5 uh, or 60. And as of today, that goes to 0 0.5 or 70 because of a change in the fee structure at my stockbroker. But those were the five Aspen, uh, Capco, Mondi, Naspass, and Steinhoff. Uh, big winners uh, was Aspen. Uh, Naspass and Steinhoff did fairly well. Mondi did well. And even Capco came to the party in the end. Interestingly, at points in the year, this portfolio was underwater. Uh, I can't remember how much. I think certainly six or eight percent underwater. Um, we had Naspass markedly down, and, and that's to the point of it. People are always, well, you know, how do you how do you exit? I hold for a year. 
I've looked at different methodologies in terms of, of, of using a stop loss. The problem with the stop loss is that I would have been stopped out in Capco, Mondi, and Naspass, all three of them, which meant that not only would I not have got that profit there, which amounts to, uh, what's it? It's about um, almost, it's 10,000 Rand almost. Not only would I not have got that 10,000 Rand profit, I would have locked in the loss. Now, I stress, if you're trading, different game. Yeah, Go do your stop loss, particularly if you're in derivatives. Here, right now, I'm saying, okay, hang on a second. The stop loss is, and I've, tra- I've crunched it as many different ways as I possibly can, and I can't find a way to action a stop loss, which actually improves the numbers. So that was my top 40, and there is the mid cap. Uh, pretty much same time yesterday, half past three, six stocks, again, 70,000 initial funding, uh, and this year, including dividends, up almost 44%. We've got the costs on the buy side. We haven't got it on the sell side. Here's one example, uh, Grinrod, where a stop loss would have been awesome. But that's why we get six stocks. So you know what? Grinrod hurt us. Omnia hurt us to a lesser degree, uh, but they're well offset by the winners. Uh, Telcom up 160%. Yowza. When, uh, uh, PSG 52 and change, uh, Brait up 65. Uh, everyone hated that deal, but hey, the market loved it. Uh, Coronation up a more modest 15. A couple of these had been held over from the previous year. Coronation, Brait, uh, and I think if I recall correctly, Omnia we had had in the previous year's portfolio as well. So one nasty loser there, Grinrod, takes a lot of shine off my portfolio. Uh, and in this case, any stop loss would have worked, but it's seldom that we get such an ugly number coming through. In fact, I don't, in, in the years we've been running this, I've never seen a, a minus 30% whatsoever. Um, and then, of course, we then exited these stocks. What we didn't do was we didn't sell all the telecoms because we checked and telecom was most definitely at 160%. Telcom was most definitely going to be carried over into the next portfolio. So we said, well, okay, we sold down telecom so that it would end up being one sixth of the total portfolio. Uh, I can't remember. We, I can't remember how many we sold. I think 120 odd. We'll get that in a moment. So both of them had a great year. Uh, there it is, just in nuts and bolts. The top 40 after all costs. This is all costs taken into account, up 29 and a quarter percent versus the Satrix 40 hour benchmark, up just over 13 percent. And no costs taken into account in the Satrix 40. Um, so, uh, but nicely ahead. We could easily slip one and a half or two percent of that Satrix 40 cost. Uh, the mid cap momentum up 43 percent and change versus the benchmark, which is RMB mid cap up 30%. Question, why don't I use the the, the naked index? Uh, I absolutely could. The reason I don't is because of dividends and because these are tradable. The mid cap ETF and the Satrix 40 ETF are tradable. So pretty much a green year across the place, um, but by a long way, top 40 momentum really, in terms of outperform, doing incredibly well, more than double uh, the momentum, a little under 50% ahead of its benchmark. So the mid cap, a little over 50% ahead of its benchmark. And what we can what what we can see is is, is that it, it it works. I mean, we got to also remember that last year the top 40 momentum had a positive year, but underperformed the index. And we want to outperform the index. That's the critical component. And this is only our second year of running this. Remember, we did it the first uh, year, uh, which was 2013, and then the start, closed it at the end of 2013 and fired off again at the beginning of March in 2014. Happened to be the third um, because the first and second were a weekend. So great performance. We are chuffed as all heck. We're liking it. Uh, he has the performance uh, life to, to – to, sorry, for the first year's performance um, – you can see there, that's what I was talking about. So we did 13% in the in the top 40, but the index did 21. Our aim here is to beat the index relative. So if the index is down 10 and we are down 5, we're beating the index. So there we didn't do so great. We underperformed it. But uh, in last year's fund, we did incredibly well in the mid-cap space. The mid-cap is going to give you bigger numbers. But make no mistake, it's a higher risk. These stocks do, you'll see the returns. We've seen some incredible returns, which means when they turn, when they collapse to earth, we're going to take massive pain. When we get a 2008 experience, we're going to take massive pain. Absolutely we are. So we need these massive outperformance years because the down years are going to really, really hurt. There's total growth life. So from 2 Jan 13 to 28 Feb 15, which was yesterday, uh, top 40, initially funded with 50,000, 
Initially funded with 50,000, as you can see, we added another 20 and another 30. That's Kaha it's 128 and the mid cap's 161. So profit is 61,000, but it's not a straight line. I've, I've unitized the portfolio. If you go to the, the URL down at the bottom there, you can pick up how and where I've uni unitized it. That's question mark I uh, I O in, in terms of uh, in terms of the, the 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 URL down at the bottom there. Uh, sorry, I zero. And what we've got here is a massive outperformance on the momentum, more than double. We absolutely need that. 104% in two years is, a, is, is an awesome number. Uh, but as I said, you know, when the crisis comes, that portfolio can go down easy, 50%, 60 70%. Um, and we'll probably still outperform, but we'll take some serious pain. The momentum is, is ahead, uh, a lot less ahead. We had a great year this year, but the previous year we lagged. So both funds are currently ahead. Again, full costs on the momentum portfolios, no costs on the two ETF benchmarks. They take a couple of percentage points off. Um, we give them the benefit right now because, well, you know what, we, they, they, they need all the help they can get is the honest answer. A uh, question you're not understanding, a question coming through, simply not understanding how 50,000 to 161 is not 300% uh, uh, or 200%. It's because I've added money and because I staggered that money coming in. So go watch that URL down at the bottom or go to just one lap dot com search for unitized portfolio you can watch the video at how i've unitized it unitizing enables me to add money uh, without impacting the the return money added into a fund should not impact a return but it's also when did you add it so although i've put a hundred thousand rand in the return is in 60 percent because well thirty thousand went in yesterday twenty thousand went in a year ago so that enables me to get a, a proper return and enable me to put money in and take money out of the portfolio so let's get to the stocks. This is what we will hear for on a Sunday morning. So I do a scan on Amy Broker. I do that scan for the uh, year 12 month return to end of February, which happened to be 27 Feb because the 28th was a, a weekend being Saturday. I scan for the biggest moving stocks. I get Mr. Price, MediClinic, Netcare, RMI, and First Rand. RMI Holdings. Uh, just below was Discovery and Aspen. Now, those are just the stock returns. If I add the dividends in, uh, it doesn't change the picture whatsoever. So that becomes a moot thing. If, if Discovery and, and, and First Rand, for example, were you know a quarter of a percent apart, the dividends might make a change. But it's those top five that we look at, and th th there they are, and they're the ones that have, have performed, and they're the ones that we will be buying tomorrow morning. Uh, in the opening auction. We've got a webcast going from 8.30 tomorrow morning. We will be buying those five shares in our top 40 portfolio with uh, the 100-odd thousand rand that sits in that portfolio. Uh, Graham is one able to buy, say, two weeks into March 2015 and what sums to use. Graham, great question. Uh, so short answer, yes. I mean, what we should do two weeks into March is go and buy the, the stocks that make it up then. So say we come along on the uh, 16th of March and we want to buy then. Uh, could you buy those five? The numbers might have changed ever so slightly. Uh, you might want to go and rescan uh, and check and see what the values are that are coming through. Um, but in, 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 in essence, you can start it whenever. And, and we're going to be doing some, some quarterly portfolios. I'll touch on that in a bit. For folks who do miss it but short answer you can jump in at any point we, we've just chosen the calendar year so the tax year and that works uh, what sums to use ideally you want to use the the, the amount that is most cost effective at your broker so in this example i've used I, i'm in standard bank so my my, my fee is a 0 0.5 or 70 rand brokerage whichever is greater at what point is 0 0.5 percent equal to 70 rand at Santa Bank, it's 14,000 Rand. So I need to ideally do 14,000 Rand per, per, per share. So in this one, I need uh, 66. And in the one with six stocks, I need, uh, uh, um, uh, what is six, six 14s is uh, 84. If you were, for example, at ABSA, where your fee is 0 0.4 or 120, you ideally need to do 30,000 for your 0 0.4 to equal 120 rand. That's where the economics of scale kicks in. So you, you got to run those numbers. I, I know a lot of folks who are doing it smaller amounts. If you're at Standard Bank and you do 5,000 rand a share, you're kind of sneaking in. Your costs are going to be, you know, your 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 your, your brokerage is going to be uh, 70 rand, which is 1.4% per share. 
plus taxes and the like, that starts to get a, a, a little more a little a little more painful in a sense. If you did a seven thousand rand transaction, it would then come in at one uh, percent plus for the relevant taxes. And then here are the mid cap stocks. I mean, look at those returns. Fortress B up two hundred percent. Telcom up 163, Capitec 114, Pioneer Foods, uh, the Fishinis Group, and Resilient. So in the first bunch, here in the top 40, we're quite dominant by financials, well, two financials and two uh, uh, health, um, and then a, 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 a retailer. Um, and then here we have got uh, two properties coming in, in Fortress B and Resilient. So here we have 60 stocks. Uh, Capitec, just a disclaimer, I hold it in my long-term portfolio. I will still buy it for this fund. They are separate. Um, and Telcom we held last year, so I just sold Telcom down. What I mean by selling it down was I held more Telcoms than I should have. Uh, Raymond, yeah, Standard Bank fees going up 1st of March, that's effective today, so that 0.5 or 70, it used to be 0.5 or 60, so the numbers I exampled there a moment ago were taking into account the new Standard Bank fee structure. So economics of scale of Standard Bank used to be 12,000, now it's 14,000 per transaction. Uh, Manny, I see your question, I'll come to it in a moment. Um, so, I mean, in essence, here we've got the, the, the six stocks for, for the uh, uh, mid-cap stocks. Um, you know, that Fortress B, I'll be honest, the stock that's turned 200% and I'm off to buy it, man, that is scary. But when I bought Telcom a year ago, it had done similar sort of numbers um, and I wasn't comfortable, but it, it just carried on going. The trick being, of course, is that when these things fall to earth mine, it's going to fall with pain and suffering and all sorts of other horrible things. I can live with that. Uh, Breit just below and AVI also just below. So those two fall out. So it's FFB, TKG, CPI, uh, PFG for Pioneer Food Group, uh, TFG and RES are the six for the mid-cap stocks. So those were the ones we'll be buying in the mid-cap. So in essence, we're buying 11 shares tomorrow morning, five in the top 40, six in the mid-cap. Um, so 2015 changes. We continue to run these two funds. There was talk around, I was looking at doing a CFD fund. I'm going to introduce that at a later point. Uh, there, there's, there's reasons why, and I can't touch on them right now, but we will bring a CFD top 40 fund in. In essence, what we will do is we will fund it with 100,000, but we will only use 50,000 for margin. So in fact, maybe only 40,000 even. That will then reduce my gearing level um, quite substantially because seven times geared, frankly, scares the heck out of me. So these two funds run. I will hold these shares, those 11 stocks, uh, until the end of February 2016, and then I will rebalance again. Uh, as I said, we added 30,000 to each portfolio effective yesterday. So total funding has been 100,000. So they're now sitting on 161,000 for the top 40 fund. I need to go and 120, call it 129,000 for the uh, top 40 and 161,000 for the um, momentum. Um, what we are going to be doing, uh, to the question that came through a moment ago from Graham, is we're going to be doing every quarter we will kick off a new fund that will run for a year. So if you miss the March one and you don't want to jump in randomly in April, uh, first trading day of June 2015, so it'll be the evening before. So 1st of June is a Monday, so on the Sunday, 31 May, we will do another webcast, exactly the same as this one, but we will effectively then have a June 15 fund that will run from 1st of June through to uh, 31 May 2016. And then in September, we will kick off uh, with a webcast on uh, the Monday, 31 August, 8 o'clock, and that will then have the September shares. And those shares will then run from 1st of September through to end of August 2016. And then we will do a December one that runs from 1st of December through to uh, 30 November 2016. And, and there are a couple of reasons for this. Um, some I'm not going to mention right now, but some of them are because folks are missing. And when I do these updates, people are like, well, what are the shares and et cetera. And I publish what the shares are when I do my quarterly updates, but I don't track them. I just say, here are the stocks. Now we will track them. So there will actually be four different portfolios running. 
here's the question I have to determine. Am I going to put cash into every one? So at the moment, I'm fully loaded up on my March 15, um, and then I'll reload those into March 16 and March 17 and so on. What do I do with my June, September, and December? Should I put cash into those? Short answer, I should. And and my my thinking is they might be smaller amounts. I might, you know, again, kick off with funding with 50000 in each um, and then increase that over as time goes. Um, but there will therefore be four portfolios running, each of them running for a full year. So part of it is to track it. Also part of it is to see, well, are there perhaps better times to buy the shares? I'm not so sure. But then as well, and, and this is going to cost a fortune, make no mistake, is that if one had each of these four portfolios, it would make you a little more diversified. And that then reduces risk. It also reduces reward. And it then means that, I mean, worst case scenario, I could own 24 of the mid cap stocks, six per each. And if they were different every time, which I doubt there would be that much difference. Um, but if I were to hold, you know, then I'm holding, you know, the costs might hurt too much. So we'll come to those dilemmas and do them, but there will be fully functional portfolios that we will track. Uh, Luke, so it will give me eight portfolios. So there will be two for March 15, which is mid-cap and top 40, two for June 15, mid-cap top 40, ditto September, ditto December. So ultimately, eight portfolios. And if I have different stocks in every portfolio, which is unlikely, but if I have different stock stocks in every portfolio, that's 88 shares. And that is, I mean, yowza, man. My stockbroker will love me. So I've got to wrap my head around that development. Um, we'll see. Uh, that, that's something I, I need to get to, but we'll worry about that in time. So those are some of the changes. Um, and then downloads. And, and many of this comes to your question. So we use Emmy Broker for our scan. Um, what we're going to do, so I create a watch list for the top 40, and I create a watch list for the mid cap. And I'm going to tr upload those two watch lists onto JOL, the, the URLs at the bottom. Um, and I'm going to upload those down onto the, onto the website so that you can download them at your leisure. They'll be up uh, sometime this afternoon. Um, and I've also I've unitized the portfolio. I showed you that video earlier around how the, the link to the video. I'll upload that spreadsheet as well so that you can download that as well and get a sense of how I've unitized the portfolio. So if you're using Ami Broker, you can go and download those watch lists. You just import them into Ami Broker and everything is great. Uh, Manny, your question was um, trouble getting the top 40 and then the top 100 up on Standard Bank platform and therefore hard to choose the the five top four, I get you. So let's head off there and, and, and show you the, the trick. I mean, I've, I've done it for you here. I've given you the stocks. But if I go to Standard Bank, the problem is, is that you cannot say just search within top 40. That's your problem. So here's what you got to do. You go instruments, you go filters, you go share filter. And you say, uh, 52-week change, and you've got to do two, you do greater than 1%. And then you have to, what I then do is I say market capitalization greater than, let's say, 5 billion. And sort me on the 52-week. And I wonder, this filter is sometimes, up oh, there it works. So here I've got them. But here's the problem. You can see... I mean, which is the first stock which is actually in top 40? Uh, boom, 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 MediClinic. So MediClinic, NetCare, Mr. Price are the top 40 stocks. So then you've got to go and filter out and say which are top 40, which are not top 40. Uh, resilient, et cetera, et cetera. How do you know which stocks are in the two different indices? If you haven't got Ami Broker, you go to list of indices. And you click there, so under index shares, um, and for example, uh, let's click on the top 40. And now you've got a list of the, of the 40, actually it's 42 because there's uh, two Mondays and two Investex. Now you've got a list of those 42 shares uh, that exist in the top 40. So now you can go in and do it that. So it, it's a bit of a hack. It absolutely is a bit of a hack. Um, as I say, I'm doing it, uh, so they're there, keeps it simpler, nice and easy. Uh, Helene, if funds are restricted and I want to follow with uh, two ETAs, it's best to buy them tomorrow lump sum or do I buy monthly? Um, so Helene, if you just want to go and buy the, the, the two ETFs, I mean, you, you can do them both. I mean, they are good long-term 
core portfolio ETFs. Um, I, I hold both directly into my account and some in my the mid cap in my sister's account. They're great. You can so you know do you do lump sum or, or buy monthly? Uh, I'm a fan of both. If, if funds are you've got money lying around, well then you know it, it, buy them a, a, a lump sum tomorrow. And then if you can afford the monthly, then do that as well. Luke, how do you handle if a stock falls out or a new one enters the relevant index? Um, I think I get what you're saying if I'm not bounce the question back to me. So once I've bought the share, if it falls out the index, I do nothing. I, I just do nothing about it. Um, it's going to have to have fallen one heck large amount, but that's not impossible. And it might fall out the index because it gets overtaken by new upcoming stocks. Um, so if they fall out, I obviously when I scan for the new index, they will be gone and the new ones will be in. The JSC publishes that every quarter. Otherwise, I don't, I don't worry. Uh, Dean, my absolute pleasure. Yeah, give them a call. They're perfectly helpful. George, uh, thoughts on using covered call options on your top 40 picks to try to get a little more out of the portfolio and then just set high prices so that the chances of them being triggered are low? Okay, George, um, sure. Of all the questions, I never saw that one coming. I like – so I get what you're saying. So I go and buy those five shares in my top 40. I then go and, s and sell some covered calls, and I would probably sell uh, for June expiries. I'm sure the Junes will be available. So I will earn some revenue from it. And really, I stick them at a very high watermark. So maybe – 20 or 30 percent above if it does trigger it's like you know what the heck the problem being is that if i sell them at that high level watermark if i sell my covered calls at that level how much revenue am i going to earn because that thing is so far out the money um so short answer i'm going to go have a look at it let, let me go buy the shares let's go have a look see um and and because you know how much if we go back to what they actually did for the quarter i want that screen there. So this is what they did for the year. Okay. So we got some chunky movers, but they're in the sort of 20s and 30s and Aspen's the outlier. So if we put something 20% away from the quarter, and you know what? If Standard Bank takes us out, you know, because the covered call uh, hits me, well, then I just go and rebuy. I might like that. I might like that a lot. George, I might owe you a, a beer or wine, a coffee, or whatever your 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 take is. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it some I'm gonna give it some 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 I'm not gonna do it tomorrow. I need to roll this in my head. I think slowly. But uh that that's cunning man. That's cunning. And I like cunning. Trust me, I like cunning. So head off to that link. It's not it's not activated just yet or if you just go to the, the just one lab website, obviously it'll be up in a couple of hours and you can download that spreadsheet as well. So quick recap, you buy the winners because those trends tend to continue and man you look at telecom that trend has continued. We update quarterly. We've talked about that process. Costs, real issue, an absolute real issue. Costs are not insignificant. So the, the, the point is to get them as low as possible, particularly if you're doing both, uh, both funds. And the question coming through here, is it all right to just do the, the, the mid cap? Um, it is. It's just more risky. You know, if I were doing just one, I would probably do the top 40. But then I'm probably a risk-averse individual. Um, tax. So let's go back and look at that. Nope, let's look at that one. Uh, nope, let's look at that one. So that, that is the returns for this year to end of Feb. Um, so what have I got? Mid cap up 43% after costs. The tax man wants their slice. So take 40% costs on that. It's 17%. Uh, Boom, R&B outperforms. Now I'm saved a bit because I didn't have to sell the telecoms. After tax, and because I didn't sell the telecoms, I'm essentially flat because I'm paying at my marginal tax rate. In the top 40, in the top 40 no sweat, pay my tax, uh, takes me down to about 19%, um, and I'm still ahead of the curve, so no problems. And in the, in the years when we lose and the portfolio is down, we'll have a tax liability. We can roll into the following year. All is good. Tax is an issue. What is the best way to solve that tax? The best way to solve that tax issue is to trade it within a fund, a unit trust, an ETF, a hedge fund. Um, and I know, I have said before, I'm going to investigate this. And I have slightly investigated it. I'm going to do it a lot 
proper uh, investigation this year. Part of the trick is some conversations I had with, with, with institutions saying, look, launch this fund. I mean, I will put my money in and I think other folks will also, and then we'll manage it by the proper rules. And I think the problem was, is they looked at it and said, but this thing's just too simple. Okay, it is just too simple. I get that. But let's go back to those numbers here. What do we have there? At 43%, for a 12-month portfolio, we have the best performing fund in South Africa. I can't find a unit trust or collective investment scheme or an exchange-traded fund or a hedge fund that did a better return in the 12 months to end February 2015. Not one. In other words, we're sitting at the we're looking at the best performing fund in the country. And in fact, the top 40 at a 29% return, I couldn't find any either. They beat it. So we're looking at the two best funds in the country. So really, the fact that it's simple, is that a problem? I mean, the reason why people would buy it, myself included, is because of the tax and because of the ease. So I'm going to spend, a, I'm going to do a lot more effort in that regard this year. In other words, what will we have? We will have ourselves a unit you know, trust or an ETF, and we can just go and buy that rather than having to do it in our individual portfolios. Uh, Peter, will you look at international index ETF trading? Uh, yes. So I'm looking at that in two ways. I'm taking my lazy system. I'm going to put uh, $10,000 into an international trading account, and I will trade my lazy system. And I also, because of the scope of ETFs available in the US, what I'm going to look at doing is doing a momentum on the ETFs. So same process, but instead of doing it on shares, although I suppose in truth we could do it in shares, we just go in and, and do it in, in, in the ETFs. I'm going to be playing around with those. Uh, Brian, you have some of the shares already. Should I just top up the missing shares? I don't want to rebalance. Brian, absolutely you can. Nothing wrong with that. So I've got the Capitex already. I'm adding Capitex to it because I've got the Capitex sitting at different up got my portfolios very much segregated. But absolutely, you can just segregate in and say, hey, you know, I'm missing this one, I'm missing that one, let me add it. The others that I've already got, I'm not going to add more to it. Um, we obviously, we put our updates on Twitter and Facebook uh, during the time. We, we typically post things either when we're doing incredibly badly or incredibly well. Um, and if it's muddling along and boring, then we don't bother with it. And uh, tomorrow morning, 2nd of March, we will be doing the live buying on these 11 shares just for fun. Uh, nothing really to be learned except watch me. It gets a little bit hairbrainy, sort of. So we start at 8.30. Nothing happens for like 20 minutes, and then it just gets a little bit crazy. Um, if you want to book, head over to justonelap.com. You can book from there. And as I said, we'll be doing those live bookings. Um, oh, there we go. There's a question coming through. How much minimum to start in the momentum portfolios? I would say probably t at a bare minimum 20,000, sorry, 25,000 per each. Um, if you're going lower than that, the costs are really going to hurt. What we're currently doing, so here's the thing. Um, what, what we're looking to do, I'm talking to, I'm trying to get a broker who will let us trade these momentum shares at 0.2%, no minimum. And then boom. I mean, just boom. Now you could frankly come with 10,000 Rand and do it. So frankly, we've agreed in principle. We've got to, there's some paperwork. And that's why I'm going to be doing the one every quarter. That's why there's a March, a June, a September, and a December. So when we kick that March off, that, that, that uh, sorry, the, the June one, if you go to the, that broker and say, I'm trading Simon's momentum portfolio, they will let you trade at 0.2%, no minimum. That basically almost removes costs as, as an issue. Uh, Peter, do you place before opening auction with limit orders? Um, so what I do, Peter, is I go in and I place during that opening auction. So from like 8.35 through to, to 9 o'clock, um, I, I put limit orders in and I basically trade them then. I'm not uncomfortable with having to trade them slightly later in the day if I miss some, but I catch most of them. Uh, my bids are all in and most of them I will get at the uncross. Raymond, yes, 8.30 is Mishima's webinar, so I will be doing two webcasts tomorrow. In truth, so I'll kick Mishima off, um, and then I will kick the live trading off. The live trading, not a heck of a lot is really happening um, in the sort of, so while Mishima's going, the, the my one will be very sort of boring and truth. So if you're in Mishima, watch hers. As soon as you're done there, close that, pop over to mine. The real fun only really starts at sort of quarter two or uh, 10 to, to nine. So there's my top 40 share selections. Um, these are the ones we benchmark against the Satrix, uh, the top five being Mr. Price, MediClinic, Netcare, RMI, and First Rand. 
And there are my uh, mid caps, Fortress B, Telcom, Capitec, Pioneer Foods, uh, the Fashini Group, and Resilient. Ladies and gents, uh, let's leave it there. Unless there are any more questions coming through, there's the Twitter and the Facebook feeds. Ladies and gents, we'll leave it there. I hope uh, that this year's uh, half as good as last in terms of momentum. Uh, Moropo, Adapt IT, I like it. Go to Just One Lap, you'll find a video uploaded on, on Friday, um, how to find massive winners. I look for my, which are the shares that are going to do best over the next 10 years. One of them is Adapt IT. Uh, Graham, absolute pleasure. Thank you. Peter, if, if quarterly portfolio, would you sell previous losers? Peter, that's what I'm rolling around in my head. So do we want to be more aggressive and perhaps rebalance on a quarterly basis? I haven't done it because of costs. I also haven't done it because it just, it, 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 on my back testing, it never gave me the numbers. But if I can get the costs down, it might actually work. So that's something that we are going to be looking at. The problem is, for example, I would have sold, in the last year, I would have sold my Capcos, my Mondis, and my Naspas, and they all ended positive. The question is, what did I replace them with? Brian, absolute pleasure. Luke, as always, a pleasure. Uh, Malopo, absolute pleasure. Ladies, gents, we will leave it there. Thank you for your time on a Sunday morning. Usually we are not uh, – oh, sorry, Stefan, you reminded me about that. Um, Stefan, you mentioned the NFEMOM, which is the ABSA ETF. They do a momentum ETF. They rebalance quarterly. It hasn't been doing great. Their, their, their methodology is a, a little opaque in terms of sense. But if you just want to buy a momentum ETF, NFEMOM is the code. You can buy it from either a, a, a stockbroker or you could buy it at ETFSA or any of those. Yep, they're rebalancing quarterly and they have not been doing excellent. Uh, Denver, absolutely thanks. Although I have to say, I'll take the congrats, but really this is a this is not a thinking man's portfolio. This is why I love it because, you know, the amount of hard work involved, well, it took me an hour to prep this presentation yesterday and half an hour to deliver it today. And that's about it. That's why I love it. I beat all the experts who live this and we just buy the winners. Got to love it. Uh, goodwill, absolute pleasure. Ladies and gents, we'll leave it there. You have a great Sunday further and we'll chat again. Cheers all.